What's up YouTube? I'm introduced, nice to introduce myself and today I want to introduce you to another one of these health bar animation overlays videos. I want to teach you how you can animate the outside or kind of the border of these uh, overlays if you want to do so, so that there's like a little white thing going around or like a lightning or maybe fire or a fireball. You see what I'm getting at, right? So I'm going to teach you today how all of these things work and then yeah, we should just dive right into DaVinci Resolve and get to it. But one thing I want to remind you up in the top left, I think there should be a video right now. Uh, you should watch that before. I like, kind of know how these things work because they I teach you very thoroughly how you make an overlay yourself. We even go over how to make smoke, fire, lightning ish. I'm going to link another fire video down below. But uh, enough of that. Let's get into the animating kind of side of things and yeah, have a little bit of fun of playing around with the DaVinci Resolve. Okay. All right, now we're in DaVinci Resolve. You see me in my little box here once again down below, you know, the keybinds, etc. And yeah, let's uh, have a look at it. We are right on the edit page right now. Our fusion composition is 10 seconds long. And you already see I created a little name tag here. Let's jump into the fusion composition and voila. Uh, if you watch the other tutorial that I just talked about, uh, this will look very familiar to you. This is what we created last time. The only difference to those who came back and I will notice that the outside border looks a little bit different, okay? And that is due to me uh, having used the polygon mask. So last time when we created the overlay, we used the rectangle mask to create the outside border. This time I went on with the polygon mask. And if I select it, you see all the little uh, points I made to mask out this little outside overlay. The rest is all of what we created as well. And then we created another polygon mask at the front here that we then used as the backdrop for the text. So if you watch the tutorial, we'll see that, you know, Polygon mask out the background and then merge the text in the background so that it overall um, this, right? Down the bottom, we see it now. Last time I forgot to tell you guys how we zoom in and out. So you gotta hold down control and then use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out here. And same thing goes for this and that viewer. Moving around, mouse wheel down and you move this around. And yeah, so this is how these things work. And let's dive right into the animation bit right now because uh, we wasted enough time, all right? All right, let me just uh, go to the media out and press one so that it shows up on this one here as well. And then we can start to animate things on two as well. All right, so there's multiple ways of achieving this kind of style that something is on the outside and moving around. And I will show you two of these today. Uh, let's start off with an easy variation of this and that is we just want to have like a little bit like maybe just something this long uh, moving around the outside here and then come back around and then we can loop this or you just have it going around once the entire 10 seconds uh, we can do all of these things so what we need to do for that actually is go in here the, that we select the outside frame and this is this this one is just the outside frame and for the outside frame what we have to do is copy and then paste it here. Now, if we press one, we will see just the frame. This is just the frame. Remember, it shows up here. And then we're gonna go to a backdrop and we're gonna give it maybe like a red. We want it to be red because we want it really to be visible when it moves around, okay? Then we connect this frame to that one. If we press one here now, we already see, okay, we have a red one. Red is already there. Um, let's just say this merge node wasn't there. So we just have this instant to the background to here. What we need to do now is grab this background and go to this little square. And boom, you already see what happens. Again, yellow is the background, green is what goes on top of the merge node, and therefore this red is now on top. Okay, this is all that happened here. If we go into the merge node and turn the blend off, it disappears. Okay, so now uh, we already have a red frame. That's awesome, but we don't want to have an entire red frame. What we want to do is actually just a little bit of this red moving all the way around. And now we come to a very uh, handy kind of tool. If we select the frame again, let's just call it frame, call it red frame. All right, now we have red frame here. We know, okay, this is the red frame. If we take a look on the right hand side on the inspector, you will see something that is position and length. If we just grab the length and 
take it away or like move it to the left, you see how it already looks like it's moving, it's animating. And I guess now you already know what's gonna happen next if we grab the position and move the position, it moves around as well. Look at that, look at that. All right, and all we gotta do now is kind of keyframe it. So you just find the right length that you want. You're like, okay, this is the length that I want. And now all we have to do is keyframe. Let's say, okay, we wanted to start at 60. That is one second in, because it's 60 frames a second. And we just give the length a keyframe and also the position. And then we want it to be done after two seconds. So plus 60 plus 60 is 180 here. And then just move the position all the way to the other side. There we go. Okay. And now we go here and play it back. You will see it's rendering right now, so it's not as fast, but you see it moving around. It is as simple as that. So now if you if you really just want that to do that with your overlay, etc., um, you don't need to have an overlay that is 10 seconds long. You could just really make yours one second long or two or three seconds, depending how long you want it to take to move around. And then, you know, you just stop it there because you will loop it within your editing, uh, within your streaming software. But if you actually want it to be longer than uh, just, you know, just this, and you want any other animations happen as well, like this little shiny thing going over the name, which is also in the other tutorial, just, you know, up in the top corner, uh, click on the eye, and then you will find some more stuff out about it. Um, you know, if you want these things to happen as well, then one thing that you can do is actually go up in the top right corner, there's the spline editor. So you click on the spline editor, and then you need to find the name of the thing that you've just been working on. So that is red frame. So we just go red frame, found the red frame here. And now we just need to uh, see and look at the position. Uh, the position is here. We can actually deselect the other stuff. We don't need to have it visible because it is just uh, the position that is important to us that it continues. The other stuff never changes. So now if we select both of these, we can have a look down the bottom here. There's something that is called smooth. And if we click on smooth, you see how it's smoothened out. And that means it starts, uh, you know, it starts slow, then gets faster, and then it smoothens out again, which is kind of can look odd in these kind of instances. But we can go through uh, some more of these things. There's also a reverse, so it moves the other way around because, you know, these, these things just got changed. Now it starts moving the other way. <clears throat> just like that. And then also we got a set loop. So this means, well, maybe let's just undo that. So this means it goes around. And then when it came around, it just starts over again. And this is a loop. See, it starts again. And this is what I meant with this uh, smooth might not be the best thing to do because it will just slow down before and just doesn't look good. So one thing you can do then again, go back to linear to keep it always the same speed, and then it won't uh, slow down. We'll just continue to loop around. Another thing that you can do is set it to ping pong if you wanted to. So then you see already here, you know, like it once it reaches its point, it's like going up here, and then ping pongs the other way. That's like all these things that you can do automatically. You don't always have to keyframe back and forth, back and forth. Just like a little thing, I don't know how you want to animate yours and if or whatnot, but this is a way how you can do it easily with these kind of things. And then, yeah, once you grab one up here, like you can move things around as well, position-wise. It's a lot of stuff that you can do. And it's also a lot of fun playing around with these. You can change the speed and what happens, etc. All right, I, I just rendered it in place so that we can actually play it back and it starts moving properly. You know, this is still the, the ping pong thing that we have in, but just so that you guys see, uh, what it can look like or may look like, all right? So to recap kind of for the first thing, let's just put the spline editor away. All we do is actually grab a copy of the outside frame that we created before, paste it here, and then uh, create another background with a different kind of color, uh, merge it in so that it's on top of what we had before, and then uh, change the length and the positioning 
And that is how we can animate around the outside. If you watched in the other tutorial how we created the smoke or the lightning, etc., then you will notice that we also for that one use the outside frame. So technically, if we went into here and into our smoke that we created, and let's just uh, blend it in like that, and maybe the displacement, we're just gonna you know, make it a little bit more fitting, I guess. Um, you will realize that this is technically also just an outside frame. So for this, we can also go down and change the length, put it kind of here, and then also adjust the positioning and then make it so like, you know, the smoke or maybe the lightning goes around, etc. Okay, so once you understand that actually all we did with the displacement node and transform and fast noise, etc. is uh, change how the outside frame looks, then you can think and be like, oh, okay, I can actually, however I use the animate the other frame, can also animate the fire, etc. And lastly, we're actually getting into something where we let something else fly around again, like we did with the square at the beginning, but this time we're going to use a little round ellipse and make it look like there's a fireball flying around. So for that, you would need to use either the lightning or the fire kind of overlay. Again, there's a link down below to the fire one. It's a really good tutorial that I watched to learn how to do this, actually. And then also my tutorial has this as well. But you need to understand this again, what I said, that this is just the rectangle distorted, right? Displaced, distorted, however you want to call it. And now if we um, delete this, rectangle it's kind of all red and what we're going to do now is use the ellipse and connect the ellipse to the yellow part and now uh, press just one so that we know where the ellipse is ah oh, there's the ellipse so move the ellipse down here it's a bit big so you're just gonna make it way way smaller and now it already looks a little bit different right so now it's a little bit like we did with the square just imagine um, we want this to kind of start here, right? So let's say, okay, we are at um, 70, okay? 70, and we give it a keyframe, right? Give it a keyframe here. And then we're gonna, let's say 200, move it to 200, move this over here. And now, all right, now we see technically it moves there, but we know already that if we go on the mouse with a plus and, oh, a sec, if we go on the mouse, mouse with a plus and just grab this point here move that one here move this point here and then move that point here all right M maybe one more up here because it kind of flies around but now if, if we just played it back it just you know it goes very straightforward like boink boink and we don't like that so now click into nothing first like nothing and then select everything and then we go here and go on smooth and that smoothens things out and now if we move this around you will see that it kind of starts shooting and actually like flying more so than you know really being uh, just stuck to this thing you can even like adjust some of these curves if you want if something like wasn't to your liking you know you can adjust some of these things and then lastly what you can also do um, let's say, okay, at the beginning, you don't want it to be that big. Um, make sure that like where you want to have it big, you give the width and the height keyframes. And then if you move it back a little bit, you know, you can make this smaller like so. That also changes the width and the height. And now if you start playing, you see it gets big and then it's big here. It moves around. And then you can also, same way, you know, animate it out like that it's slowly. If you want it still to be big here, you know, and then slowly like move it to the end and then just grab the edge and make it really tiny. And that way, you now, you know, have something animated that's uh, flying around. And if you paid attention, now you could actually backtrack this and make flames stay up when this ball goes around that this part behind the ball actually is still in flames because then you can use Again, the outside frame and change the length of the frame following this kind of little fireball. And that's what this then would look like. That's an overlay that I made for Dracoda. Uh, but yeah, so this is like a lot to take in, but mainly it's really just to understand that these 
these little masking tools, all we kind of did with this ellipse now is mask out this part of the big red and then animated the mask flying around. All of these kind of things, you can play around with it, move it different positions. Yeah, just have a little bit of fun, like experiment, guys. This is what I want to encourage you to, any, to do anyways. Uh, play around as much as you can with these kind of things because you can, up with, can come up with so many fun and cool things. And I hope that you enjoyed this. And yeah, got to take away something new. I know this was hopefully not too long, uh, but uh, insightful and not too confusing. If it was too confusing, yell at me and I will try to make it better next time, okay? All right, that was it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I appreciate every little comment. Uh, a lot of people have uh, been writing me actually also in the DMs. I appreciate every single one of you. It's so nice to see that you guys get out there creating and hitting me up. And uh, also that you thank me so much for, you know, putting these things out there. Uh, I really, really love seeing this and I appreciate you guys so, so much. That being said, I can't wait to create more. I don't know why it said this so I, uh, I want to encourage you to actually uh, hit the subscribe button also the bell uh, to be notified when i post more things and i also put my discord uh, link down below so if you have any questions or suggestions i should and do have uh, something on my discord where you can ask these things and yeah let's get a community going introduce ourselves to each other and have a good time all right i'll see you next time peace out peace out